not another video on lead generation, but I promise you guys, I'm not gonna drag you through a Facebook tutorial or anything like that with these crazy online advertisement gurus. I'm gonna teach you three ways that you can generate real estate leads for absolutely free, and more importantly, because you probably already know every single way that there is to generate real estate leads if you clicked on this video. How do you take advantage of those ways to actually convert the lead? I'm gonna give you some basic scripts to use, some follow-up tools, and we're gonna jump right into it. And I have to ask because I'm a new YouTube channel, but if you don't mind, go ahead and subscribing to my channel and giving me a thumbs up if you enjoy the content in this video. All right, so what's the first tip? And you already know it. It's something you can do every single weekend. It's gonna be an open house. But more importantly, I already told you you're gonna know these lead generation ideas. How do you take advantage of an open house so you don't just sit around, waste your time, and actually get leads off of it so that you can get more closings in the next month or two? So here's a basic script and run through of how I would host an open house for myself or my team to actually get buyer leads or seller leads through the door. So the first thing you wanna do is turn on all the lights in the house. And this can't be understated. You wanna be as professional as you can. Now, if you're a man, you wanna dress in a type of suit depending on the environment that you're in to put yourself out there as being the realtor. Don't just show up with like shorts and jeans and a t-shirt. You know, make yourself look respectable, but don't overdo it to the point where you're looking like James Bond or anything like that. If you're female, obviously dress the best way that you possibly can. Again, don't wear jeans or anything like that. Put yourself apart as the real estate professional in that room whenever clients walk through the door. So the first thing you wanna do on top of turning on the lights is have a sign-in sheet. Now me personally, I don't like using an iPad because a lot of the people that come through the door and use an electronic sign-in device are probably not gonna put in real information in the first place. What I would do if I was the realtor is engage with that person that walks through the door, look them in the eye, shake their hand or bump their fist because it's Corona season and grab your clipboard and your sign-in sheet and literally ask them their name, their email and how to spell it and their phone number. If they complain about that or don't wanna give away their personal information, you can always blame it on the seller. Trust me, you can blame anything on anyone else when you're in real estate. So always say, oh, it's just for the seller's protection. You know, you're walking through the house, obviously they don't wanna have anything missing for liability. And I'm sure that that client is gonna give you their information. Now, after you have their information and you're all professional, you introduce yourself, you tell them a little bit about the house. And when I say a little bit about the house, I mean like a quick 10 or 15 second preview, just expressing some of the best things that you liked about that open house. You go from there and then you let them tour the house. They're probably not gonna say much because they don't know you at this point. Let them tour the house, let them come back to you at the end, you need to situate yourself in the open house so that you're in a position where they can't just sneak out the front door and never see you again. Obviously, you're gonna ask the question, how'd you like it? But a better way to ask that question is, tell me three things that you liked about the house and three things that you didn't like about the house and have them open up to you. And you want them to be honest, you know, just have a conversation with them as you would to your friend or your, you know, a relative, anyone you want to have a decent conversation with. These are pretty basic things that you should have been doing in the first place, but you no, know, I wanted to throw out there just in case you're a newer agent or maybe you have never just tried that process or step-by-step -step process before. This is where the real value is going to be added in your conversation. You want to hit them with something that they don't know. And you want to ask them, you know, like these irregular questions that you know they're not going to know the answer to, so you set yourself as the answer giver at that point. So a quick example on this, hey, by the way, do you know how much closing costs you need to be able to buy your next house. And the average first time home buyer or even second time home buyer at this point is probably not even gonna know what closing costs or you can mix it up and sound fancy and say seller concessions. They're not gonna know what that is. And they're not gonna know if they need it or if they don't need it or if they even want it. So you can give them a quick little value add piece because they're gonna come back and say, wait, w what do you mean? And that's your time to provide value or to provide knowledge to them so that it drills it in their brain. If they need any help, this guy is the expert or this girl is the expert to help me buy my next house. I don't want you to ask any questions of like, have you been working with a realtor? No, you don't need to ask anything like that because regardless if they're working with a realtor or not, you are trying to be the next realtor that gets them that closing into the house they love so you can get the commission, not the other, because you're gonna provide so much more value. Now, the next steps in this whole process of converting that lead is really not to convert that lead at all. It's just to have a basic conversation with them. So for example, study the area. If you're gonna go do a $500 to $600,000 townhouse in, I don't know, let's just say in the Northern Virginia area, it's Alexandria, Virginia, why don't you 
pull before you do the open house a list of comps in that area that are active in the market and be like, hey, did you check out that house over in Kingsbrook, Alexandria that I saw? It seems like it would be a great fit for you. And they're gonna be like, oh no, I never even saw it. And then here's your chance to try to win their business or ask for commitment. You can be like, hey, well, you know, the open house is about to end at this time. If you don't mind, I can just swing by and show you really quick. It's on my way home. And now is your time to get more face time with that unrepresented client to be able to convert them to your business. Now, if that option or resource doesn't work out, the natural flow of the conversation needs to be you basically just asking them questions that they don't know the answer to so you can provide more value. And in the description, I'm gonna list a bunch of open-ended questions that you can use at your next open house, so feel free to check out that as well. Now, at this point in time, if you can't get them into another house immediately from the open house that you're doing, you wanna get them in front of you eventually and without hassling them with a weird follow-up call that offers nothing at all besides, hey, do you see anything on the market you look no we don't need to do that what you need to do is ask for commitment before they leave your site and you may be nervous doing this but you need to just give it a shot and see what happens and switch it up from there so what I want you to do is before this client leaves ask them hey you know what's a good time that I can meet with you for some coffee and we can go over some of the stuff we talked about and that's it you know when can we grab coffee it's just nonchalant it's not like when can we go through a buyer consultation so I can tell you how much you can save using me. No, you don't need to act like a robot. Just be a friend and you're gonna convert that lead. So that's my number one tip on how to do an open house to get free real estate leads and take your conversion to the next level. Tip number two is going to be a Craigslist rental ad. Now, rentals, you may just like hate me for this all of a sudden and be like, oh, I don't make any money off rentals. But again, it's not about making money off of it. Again, it's free, so you can't expect a lot of money back on it. You gotta plant a seed. And even if you are a team leader and you don't wanna do any buyers and you're just a listing agent, you can still plant the seed leveraging other people. It's the same way I do it in my business. And I get commission checks or referral checks, I should call them, into my bank account because I plant seeds early on. On and have other people do the legwork after I teach them. So Craigslist rental ads. You wanna take any rental lead that's in your brokerage office and you want to run a Craigslist rental ad on it and Graham Stephan, a famous YouTuber, has an awesome video on this that I followed as well. I started doing it right around a year after his video got published and that's when my first year in real estate really just exploded and I tripled my income my second year. So I highly recommend you to check it out. I'm gonna leave it in the description below and I'll probably make a video about it anyway. Enough of that, basically what you're gonna do is run a basic rental ad and people are gonna be contacting you for that rental. Now, you're gonna to have to figure out a way to automate so your phone doesn't get blown up and you just waste a bunch of time. But again, time versus money. What do you have more of and figure out to use your resources and go from there. So when someone calls you off this Craigslist rental ad, they're obviously gonna to wanna to see the house. They're gonna ask if it's still available. You need to ask a set of qualifying questions that I'll leave in the description below so that you can make sure that they're not making like 20 grand a year and not gonna be able to afford the actual rental. Make sure that they can qualify for it. Book the appointment. Either you go out to that person to try to convince convert them or have a, another associate, like I told you, get leverage, a newer agent, go out to that lead and try to convert them and ask for a split if that lead ends up buying. Now here's where we take it to the next level because anyone in the world has told you that by now. You need to have an extremely good follow-up campaign for at least a two or three year time frame. The goal of you meeting with that tenant is to not get them into a rental. It's to help them buy a house. So you need to be flabbergasted when you see them, especially when you ask them those basic qualifying questions like, you know, hey, obviously you know the property manager is going to need a credit score above 650 and an income at this threshold and once they tell you they have that you're going to be like wait I don't understand why would you want to rent just just buy it sounds like you can qualify well, don't you want the tax write-offs and all the good incentives you don't need to sell people on why they want to buy a house people know why they want to buy a house at this point so build that relationship and really cultivate your whole presence of helping them being around I'm going to help you buy eventually some people are in a temporary job transfer most people that end up renting especially in the DC metro area end up moving for a job transfer and don't want to buy immediately. They just want to test out the area. So they'll do a short-term lease and end up converting very fast. As a matter of fact, one of the best closing commission checks I've ever had is from a lead that I had converted from a rental lead two years prior and ended up closing buying a $700,000 house at a 3% commission. I referred it out and two years later made 10 grand for doing nothing over the course of two years besides following up. And let me define what follow up means. There's a link in the description for an awesome CRM that I use. I do get an affiliate off of it just to disclose that. I'm willing to give you my template for free if you sign up for it. So if you're interested, click the link down below. I'll probably make a video about that in the future anyway. But it allows you to customize any type of follow-up you want without being creepy and picking up the phone and be like, hey, what are you doing? I'm your realtor still because it 
sounds weird. So with this follow-up template, you can send them Facebook messages, you can drop them voicemails, you can drop them texts, you can drop them emails, and you can customize all of this. I literally have two-year campaigns for my buyers so that I stay top of mind with my clients every single angle. And on top of that, if you watch any of my other videos about getting real estate leads, you want to make sure that you're running some type of very cheap, low-cost, either Google retargeting ad, you know, the little ad that just follows you around the internet no matter what website you're on, and a simple video Facebook testimonial that just retargets everyone that has watched any of your content or visited your website at any point. Again, I know this video is about free content, but I'm telling you those retargeting ads are so powerful. And I feel like this video has been long enough, but I'm going to rush through the last topic so that you can get some more lead generation ideas. Uh, so this is going to be for all the listing agents out there, and it's definitely well known, but it's to convert FISBOs. Now, how do you do it for free without buying Red X or those, all those weird programs for expired listings, uh, and you have to pay monthly and set up fees. No, no, you don't have to do any of that. When I was my first year in real estate, what I did is I picked up the phone and called every single FISBO expired listing that I saw went inactive. I researched their phone number, called them through Zillow FISBO. Uh, there's a little section on Zillow that has a FISBO section. And I just picked up the phone and talked with them. I just said, hey, you know, I may have a buyer in the area. Now, there's a lot of different scripts and ways you can approach these FISBOs and a lot of realtors disagree with how you should or how you shouldn't do it. But the way that I did it kind of worked. It was like a 50-50 return on the people that I booked an appointment with. But I just basically picked up the phone and said, hey, I got a lot of buyers in the area. I'd love to come tour the house. When I got in front of them in person, I would just ask them like, hey, you know, how come you don't have it listed on the, you know, on the, uh, on the market? Figure out what works for you. Ultimately, you just got to do it like Nike and kind of tweak it from there. But those are my three best free lead generation tips that I can give you on how to really convert the lead. Again, the money is in the follow-up. I can't say that enough. And it's what every single realtor hates. So if you are interested in having the follow-up done for you for free, on this CRM. Click the link down below so you can check it out and learn if it's going to be a good fit for you. Anyways, if you like this content, go ahead and subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, and I hope it taught you something new, and I'll catch you in the next one.